Lakers' LeBron James badly wants Russell Westbrook swapped for Kyrie Irving. And who could blame him? Although Russell Westbrook ascended to outstanding accolades, his glory was as short as a cherry blossom season in Japan. Now, he's just as bumbling and stumbling as the current president of the U.S. Yes, it's that bad to watch. Here's why the king of basketball LeBron James badly wants to replace point guard Russell Westbrook with seven-time All-Star Kyrie Irving. But what are his chances? Stick around and find out. It came out just towards the end of July. A report from Mark Stein of Substack highlighted how LeBron James indeed wants the Lakers to trade for Brooklyn Nets star Kyrie Irving. And it's kind of unanimous by players and fans alike. They'd like to see Russell Westbrook hit the road. He hasn't been pulling his own weight. Stein also reported that Westbrook is aware of James's desire to play with Irving. Stein continued to divulge the scoop reporting, As it stands, barring a trade to ship out Westbrook, suddenly coalescing after weeks of fruitless talks. Darvin Ham is going to have to coach Westbrook, which is bound to be challenging in the extreme given that Westbrook is well aware that the Lakers have been trying hard to move him, and that James badly wants Irving to take his place. There's no smoke and mirrors or hidden agendas here. There is no secret to any party involved. Why does James want to ball with Irving? Keep in mind, LeBron James and Irving played in 183 regular season games together on the Cleveland Cavaliers. In doing so, they compiled a stellar record of 132 and 51. The two All-Stars also went 39 and 13 in the playoffs and guided the Cavaliers to the 2016 championship over the Golden State Warriors. Why is James fed up with Westbrook? The rigid relationship that Westbrook and James have became obvious once again. Just recently, during the Lakers Summer League game on July 8th in Las Vegas, James and Westbrook didn't sit next to each other or provide cordial greetings. There wasn't even a simple hello. Even more obvious was James sitting on the south baseline while Westbrook positioned himself on the opposing sideline. Kyle Goon of the Orange County Register reported on the matter saying, Several people within the Lakers organization acknowledged it was an awkward and tense moment between its two most high-profile superstars. Westbrook started 78 games for the Lakers last season. The nine-time All-Star averaged 18.5 points, 7.4 rebounds, and 7.1 assists while shooting 44.4% from the field, 29.8% from beyond the arc, and 66.7% from the free throw line. That might sound fantastic, or at least okay, but actually it's not because Westbrook was second in the NBA in turnovers and had the sixth worst effective field goal percentage. The King won't want you on his court with that performance. Not only is Westbrook a poor fit for LeBron James, he's mutually unfavorable for Anthony Davis. The downfall of Russell Westbrook. Once upon a time, Westbrook was an astonishing player capable of on-court miracles. It took nearly 13 seasons of piling statistical marvel on top of statistical marvel to creep toward Oscar Robertson's NBA record of 181 triple doubles. After struggling to play through a torn quadricep, Westbrook still managed to recover and notch seven triple doubles in 14 games. He followed that with 14 triple doubles in 17 games soon after. That accomplishment broke a record set by Chamberlain in 1968. It was clear to most experts and fans alike that Westbrook's freak athleticism, especially at the rim, and his unwavering intensity would surely see him enjoy NBA longevity in the spotlight of glory. Yet, most experts and fans overlook some equations that should have been glaring in red alert. That big red warning light came in the manner of players' ratio of win shares per 48 minutes. The WS can be very telling, and here's where and how analysts derive that Russell Westbrook's impact began to decay. It was actually starting as soon as he hit his MVP season. According to Basketball Reference, an average player records a WS48 of roughly .100. Remember, the win series, or WS, is a player statistic which attempts to divvy up credit for team success to the individuals on the team. During Russell Westbrook's MVP season, his WS48 was .224. He was the 10th best in the NBA. Durant led the NBA at .278 during his first season with the Golden State Warriors. That came a season after Westbrook's career best mark in win shares. In 2015-16, he was fifth in the NBA with a .245 mark, behind Durant's .270, yet still dusted by Stephen Curry's .318. During those years, if you were paying attention to the win shares, you'd have a reputation today as a soothsayer, if not a prolific sportscaster. In the five seasons since, Westbrook's win shares have declined so low that everyone can tell, even those who are absolutely new to the NBA world. And the decline has not been fractional either. Westbrook has underperformed significantly in each of the last six years. 
and the truth was always in the numbers. According to NBA statisticians, beginning with his MVP season, Westbrook's WS48 figures began to decay. Keep in mind, .100 is an average player's expected number. In the 2016-2017, his WS48 hovered gloriously at .224. The following year, that decreased to .166. In the 2018-2019 season, it slipped downward to .124. Then, the pattern continued to 0 .098 in 2019-2020. 2020. 2020 through 2021 saw no difference as rock bottom showed at WS48 of 0 .075. Now, as of back in January of 2022, those numbers were laying in waste at 0 .041. Yes, reality often bites. And more times than usual, it actually effing sucks. In the realm of the NBA, that's exactly how the Lakers feel as they are not even close to trading Westbrook. In mid-July, Dave McMenamin of ESPN reported that the Lakers, who missed the playoffs last season, offered Westbrook to the Nets for Irving. However, talks between Los Angeles and Brooklyn Nets haven't progressed. Not only is Brooklyn reluctant to acquire Westbrook, they're hell-bent on keeping Irving. As for another potential trade for Westbrook, Bob Kravitz and Sham Sharania of The Athletic recently reported that a package that would have seen the Lakers trade Westbrook and a first-round pick to the Indiana Pacers for center Miles Turner and shooting guard Buddy Heald is currently DOA. Indiana wants a second first-round pick added to the deal before they're even willing to negotiate further. As for other teams, specifically the Mavericks, they reportedly said hell no when it came to the mention of a Russell Westbrook trade. Keep in mind that Irving, who is just now pushing 30, will make $36.5 million next season. He appeared in 29 games for the Nets last season and averaged 27.4 points, 4.4 rebounds, and 5.8 assists. Uncle Drew didn't make his 2021-22 season debut until January because he refused to take the COVID-19 vaccine. But who could honestly blame him for taking an experimental drug? And although the Nets made a collective decision not to have Irving be a part-time player to begin the season, the franchise later changed its stance, realizing that it would be a total and utter pathetic loss to have him even part-time, but failed to utilize him as the asset that he truly is. But let's not digress too much. When it comes to the camaraderie of Irving and James, they do have a past. The three-time All-NBA guard Irving once requested a trade from the Cavaliers in 2017 because he reportedly didn't want to play in the King's court, which could overshadow his true worth. However, after spending time away from the King's kingdom, the two champions still have a good relationship. And it's that bond that intoxicates LeBron, pushing him to pray for a reunification with Irving. Here's what the Lakers could do with Kyrie Irving. The Lakers could compete for the title next season if they acquired Irving. Honestly, Irving is a better shooter than Westbrook. Irving is a career 39.3% shooter from beyond the arc, while Westbrook is at 30.5%. Andy Bailey, one of the NBA experts at the Bleacher Report, was quoted, Kyrie's fit in LA probably doesn't require much analysis. He and LeBron won a title together in 2016. He can shoot, which is the biggest differentiator between him and Westbrook. And he's almost four years younger than Westbrook, too. Even with whatever off-court concerns may come with Kyrie, replacing Russ with him feels like a no-brainer. But before all the hype and considerations are even calculated, the Lakers should run a detailed plausibility study on how much Kyrie Irving would actually improve the Lakers' title odds. After following it closely, it does seem as though if the Lakers' focus is to maximize title contention, then going all-in on Kyrie Irving and doing everything possible to acquire him should be the team's primary focus. If they can make it happen, they'll improve their championship odds and vault themselves right smack in the middle of all the title contending teams. And that's the main goal. Comment down below regarding the plans you'd like to see take shape for Irving, LeBron James, and the Lakers.